Hey professionals, so I've created a new timeline setup that helps fix some of the biggest weaknesses that come with adjustment clips. Normally adjustment clips affect everything below them. There's no way to control which layers it impacts and when it stops impacting them. And that produces a lot of problems. For example, when I was creating this promotional shot for one of my plugins, I ran into a major issue. The adjustment clips were completely losing the transparency. If we take a look at this shot right here, you can see what my first early attempts were. And right now, sure, motion looks good, but I wanted a custom colored background and I've actually tried applying one here. So if we zoom in on these, you can see I've got two adjustment clips and the footage itself. Now, if we hide this footage, you can actually see that's the colored background I'm attempting to put on here. So what's happening here is if we just turn on the adjustment clips without the footage, you can see that the colored background is actually moving as well. So it's not disappeared, it's just hidden beneath the footage itself. And so I thought, well, okay, let's try turning these into a compound clip. Maybe the adjustment clips are just moving the background out of the way. So we go ahead, we do this, we create a compound clip and we still get the black background. And so what's happening here is that the adjustment clip isn't just moving the background, it's completely destroying any transparency we want. And what this simply means is you can't choose a colored background, you can't add things to your footage like drop shadows. What's going to make this even more problematic is that without adjustment clips, this shot would have taken way longer to build. So, I ended up creating this unique style of timeline. And as you can see here, sure enough, we've got a background a drop shadow on the footage and we are using adjustment clips to do just that. Just because it looks like it, I'm calling it the burger timeline. Let's fire up the grill and I'll show you how to create your own burger timeline right now. The first step to setting up this timeline is to just add your choice of background. So for this case, I'm going to use a simple solid color and I'm just going to choose a nice contrasty color to keep this tutorial easy to follow. And so this color here is the bottom bun of our burger. On the second video track, the next thing we're gonna be putting down is our footage, which also happens to be the meat of the burger. But before we do anything fancy to this patty, we gotta prep it. And to do this, we just need to set the zoom to half. Yes, this is shrinking the footage, but trust me, it'll all make sense very soon. The next thing that's gonna come up is a lot of the times when we're doing shots like these, we wanna have overlays, whether that's some sort of scan lines or blurs or something. We're usually wanting to have the same kind of overlay across many different shots. And so an easy way to apply that is with, you guessed it, another adjustment layer. And this is where the cheese comes in. For my footage, I want to add some scan lines. So pop in another adjustment clip, then we'll pop inside Fusion in that adjustment clip and apply two sets of scan lines. By the way, here are the settings if you want to follow along. With those scan lines out of the way, you're going to notice another issue. These scan lines aren't just affecting the footage, they're affecting everything. So to fix that, we're just going to add a mask. So we'll just grab a rectangle node in Fusion, connect it to both of them, and boom, the cheese is now perfectly melted onto the footage. So next up, you think we would be applying the lettuce, but it's not gonna make much sense until we apply the top bun itself. So we're gonna do that first. So to do this one, we need to grab another adjustment clip, drag it on like so, and then we just wanna increase the zoom to two. So after we've applied this, you might be thinking, why did we do this? We zoomed out of the footage and we zoomed into the footage and now we've got the exact same looking footage. It seems like more steps for no extra difference. Well, it'll all make sense now that we're going to add the lettuce. So the lettuce is all about keeping things fresh with smooth animated movements. If you watched my previous video on adjustment clips, you know I love using Magic Animate. It makes these smooth animations much easier and much quicker to drop down. First thing you're going to need to do is drop down another adjustment clip. And then inside here, we're going to grab Magic Animate and apply the settings. And just like that, we have an animated subject with a background. And yes, you can add your drop shadows and whatever else you need. And the lettuce is probably the main advantage of this because we can actually stack the lettuce adjustment clips on top of each other and create these really smooth animations between different areas. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. If you watched my previous adjustment clip video, you probably saw that technique where I use markers on the adjustment clip itself to help make sure that these animations are going to play really smoothly between each other. When I drag this adjustment clip on top of the other adjustment clip and I line this marker up just like there, 
it's basically going to be really smooth animations between them. So with that, I can now just go ahead and change the new focus point. So I'm just going to adjust the pivot up and down until I get it where I want. Probably get a bit more of an extreme zoom. And you'll see, we're gonna get some footage that looks like this. Now you notice that we're getting a nice zoom in, but you'll notice a little mistake I made here where I just zoomed in on the top without my mouse movement being done. And thankfully, because of these adjustment clips, it's really easy to adjust the timing. I'm just going to go to that point where I click, which is here. So I probably want that animation to end just a smidge before it. So I'm just gonna turn off locking, drag this down, drag that there, and then I'll give that another quick little play. Okay, cool, so that's the timeline in a nutshell. Now, before you go ahead and start flipping burgers on your own timeline, there are a couple things you really need to watch out for with the setup. If you zoom in here, yeah, you can see that the footage is quite a bit softer for what we'd like. And the reason why this is happening is because we basically scaled the footage down, which halved the resolution, and then we scaled it back up, but it doesn't recover the resolution. Thankfully, there's like a pretty easy fix for this. We just go into our timeline settings and double the resolution. Okay, so for some reason while recording this demo, uh, every time I try to change the timeline resolution, it seems to be crashing Resolve. That kind of makes sense. You're not really supposed to change the timeline resolution halfway through working on a project, just because there's so many different maths and adjustment clips and things and effects going on in that timeline. When I try to change the resolution, it's trying to change a lot of other settings at the same time. And even my M3 Pro just seems to be having a little bit of trouble figuring out what to do. So my theory is if we can change the a timeline settings without anything in it, it shouldn't crash. Working with my theory, I'm just going to duplicate my timeline, change this to version 03, delete everything, double the timeline's resolution. And then all we have to do is control A everything, copy it, come across, paste it, yeah, just like that, easy as. So if we zoom in on this, you can see that this is the HD footage. It looks pretty not great. And then if we come to here, yeah, you can see that's looking much sharper, much clearer, like we didn't lose anything in the first place. So that's the first thing you need to fix. But this also brings in another problem. Again, there is a solution. When we double the resolution here, for me, I'm not having too much of a problem on an M3 Pro with a 4K timeline. But if you're working on a 4K and you want to export 4K, that means you're going to need to export 8K. And previewing that resolution is going to give you really sloppy, really choppy preview of what you're doing. And it kind of defeats the whole purpose of what the burger timeline's about. It's really about being able to make these camera movements quickly without having to doing an exact science from the beginning. You can easily move and change things around. So to fix that issue, we can just go into the playback resolution here and we're going to turn that to half. So what you're gonna see there is we're getting back to that similar looking footage we had before, but when we go to hit render, it's gonna look sharp as always. And you can always turn that on and off if you need to check out the quality. But again, this is all about being able to do those animations as quickly as possible. So now you know how to build your own burger timeline, but if you wanna save even more time and creativity with these adjustment clips like you've seen, then you should definitely check out this video here where I go into them in much more detail. And until next time, happy editing, everyone. I know for a fact someone's gonna comment on the way an Aussie says burger, burger, burger. Whatever, you're gonna live with it. <laughs>